Tired of your indoor plants always dying because they don't get enough light, or you don't water them when they need it? We put our heads together and came up with a solution. With a raspberry pie, a few tools, and a couple hours of your time, no more crusty plants. Hey guys, Aaron here. In this video, we're going to make an indoor automatic gardener. The gardener uses a five volt LED grow light with different modes that can be toggled by the flick of a switch. It also has a small pump that can water your plant on demand. It attaches to the pot via a small clamp and can be adjusted for different sized plants. All of the components are controlled through a Raspberry Pi Zero, which can schedule when your plant gets light or water. Let's get started. For this project, we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi Zero W. It has built-in Wi-Fi. We're also going to be using this LED grow light. It's powered by a five volt USB. It's important that this is five volts so that we can power it by our Pi. For the water, we're using this 12 volt peristaltic pump and some tubing so that we can pump the water to the plant. We 3D printed this housing, which has a spot for the pump and a mounting point for the Raspberry Pi. We're also using this 12 volt boost adapter that we've used in several of our other projects. To turn the light in the water pump on and off with the Raspberry Pi, we're using two end channel MOSFETs. And to wire everything together, we have a couple of jumper wires. The 3D printed housing attaches to the stem of the LED grow light and the pump slides into the side. We started by soldering on connections to both sides of the 12 volt boost adapter. The 3D printed housing has a space for some wires, so we put the boost adapter inside of the housing and fed the wires out through the top. We then connected the input to 5 volt and ground on the Raspberry Pi. We snipped the connector off the USB cord for the 5 volt grill light so that we could expose the wires and connect them to our Pi. We fed the wires through one of the openings on the back of the case and then wired the red wire to the 5 volt output on the Raspberry Pi. The ground wire was then soldered to the drain pin on one of the end channel MOSFETs. The drain pin was then soldered to a ground pin on the Raspberry Pi and the gate pin was soldered to a signal wire which attached to pin 20 on the Raspberry Pi. The MOSFETs will be used as switches for the external components. When the gate pin is pulled high, the drain and source will be connected and turn on the light. Next we soldered a ground wire to our pump. The wire was then fed through the opening in the back of the slot for the pump. After testing out the automatic gardener, we noticed that the pump didn't turn on. This is because we weren't able to output an out enough current with our 5 volt power adapter. Therefore, we're going to separate the power and use one of um, these 12 volt switching power supplies just so we can output more current. You can also use a 12 volt battery pack or even a 12 volt uh, power adapter. Next we wired the second end channel MOSFET to the pump. We wired our 12 volt power cable directly to the pump. Both the 12 volt ground and the source pin were wired to ground on the Raspberry Pi and then a signal wire was wired to pin 12 on the Raspberry Pi. The entire circuit diagram for this project can be found on our Hackster.io page. We finished by wrapping up both in-channel MOSFETs with some electrical tape just so their connections wouldn't short out. Finally, we wired two extension wires for our 12 volt switching power supply. Next, we fed some 3mm screws through the openings on the back of the case and attached the Raspberry Pi. We also used some 2.5mm screws to attach the pump to the side of the case. We then reattached the case to the stem of the LED grow light with a few longer 4mm screws. There's a nice slot on the side of the case for the Raspberry Pi power cable. I didn't have VNC set up on this Raspberry Pi, so I connected through SSH 
on my terminal on my Mac. To run this project, you're going to need to download some code from our repository. I just copied the download zip link and used wget on the Raspberry Pi to save and extract the folder. The project runs off of a simple Python file and you might need to modify a few lines of that file. I'm going to use vim. If you don't have vim installed, you can run the command apt-get install vim. After entering the automatic gardener master directory, I typed vim gardener.py to open the gardener.py file. At the top, you'll notice two variables, one for the light pin and the other for the pump pin. My light pin was pin 20 and my pump pin was pin 12. You can change these if your signal wires are wired to different pins on your Raspberry Pi. The program has a simple scheduler which can turn the components on and off at different intervals. If you scroll down, you'll see a block of code where several lines are commented out. The first line, scheduler.every30 minutes, will turn the pump on every 30 minutes for 10 seconds. Below that, you can see there are other, several other lines for turning the components on at different intervals. You can modify these lines to schedule the light and water at specific times. In order to modify these schedules, you'll have to uncomment the line and then modify the time or day at which the event is scheduled. I'll have more information about this on our GitHub page. You'll need to make sure pip is installed. You can do this by typing pip and you should have some output text in the terminal. Then you'll need to run sudo pip install schedule to install the scheduler library that I use for this program. You'll also need to make sure that the Raspberry Pi GPIO library is installed. I did this by typing sudo pip install rpi.gpio. Finally, you can run the program by typing python gardener.py. Next, I want to make sure that my gardener starts up whenever I plug in my Raspberry Pi. To do this, I'll type pwd to get the current working directory. Then I'll type sudo vim slash etc slash rc.local to edit the rc.local file and run my program when the Pi starts up. Right before exit 0, I'll press I to edit, then type python, paste the current working directory, and then add gardener.py to the end of the current working directory. The last thing I'll need to do is restart my Pi, and the program should be running. To attach the gardener to the plant, we simply clipped it on the base of the pot. We also needed to cut some vinyl tubing so that we could pump the water into our plant. We cut a length that barely reached the bottom of the glass, and then we fit the new tube over the existing tube on the right side of the pump. We cut a second length that was long enough to fit just underneath the plant, and attached it to the left side of the tubing. All right, that's it for this video. If you wanna see the full write-up and circuit diagrams for this project, make sure to check out our post on hackster.io. As always, it will be linked in the description. As you may have noticed, we don't post videos that regularly on this channel. This is because we have to plan, film, edit, design, and build the project before we can actually post the video. Davis and I have been thinking about making some behind the scenes videos where we kind of walk you through that process just so we can post some more content on the channel for you guys to watch. If enough of you are interested in this, we'll start posting those videos. Otherwise, we'll just stick to the normal video schedule. As always, thanks for watching. If you want to keep up to date with all of our projects, make sure to subscribe to get notifications about our new videos. But until then, see you next time.